All right, so today we're on the west coast of the island and we're going to paint a waterfall called Pissebecken. See if there's somewhere out here I can paint from. Oh, that's looking pretty good there actually. With the trees on the sides there. The only problem is right here, there's loads of rocks. So I'm not sure how easy it's gonna to be to set up my easel, but it's not always supposed to be easy, is it? So I'll give it a crack. Alright, so you can see I'm all set up over here now. I had to clear a space here so that I could actually just stand there because there's just rocks everywhere. And my old viewfinder's not doing so well. It got a bit crushed in my bag, unfortunately. But I'm basically going for this portrait composition, including these trees and having the waterfall in the background there. Just trying to get that feeling of looking into a little hole here which I think really is what this composition is all about, is looking, is that triangle there and looking through into the waterfall. So I'm trying to get that by bringing the trees down, flanking the waterfall on both sides and having some bushes in the foreground here to frame the bottom part. And today I'm going to be using a linen panel that I made myself. And I've actually made a step-by-step -step guide on how to make these panels if you're interested. So I'll leave a link at the top here. And this is actually the first time I've ever painted a waterfall, so it's going to be interesting to see how I can capture that. So I'm just looking at this as a composition really. This is where I'm thinking the waterfall is going to start and flow down here. Oh, so... <laughs> Someone's just started using their chainsaw up there, which is great for video audio obviously. But anyway, this is the composition that I've come up with. This is where the waterfall starts and these are the trees around here and I'm I'm just bringing in this area. I really like that bit of light coming at the top there, so I'm going to try and bring that into this area up here. So I can start looking at some darks now, bringing in some... So I can start looking at some darks now, bringing in some ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, the usual, and some burnt sienna. And I'm thinking these are going to be pretty dark, these trees, because I want the focus to be in the middle and the light there with the water and I actually forgot my usual holder so I'm just using this plastic thing I found in my bag as a dipper so I made up this darker mix here which I can start bringing in just concentrating on this tree up here at the moment trying to bring that in get the form of it in there so that it frames this side of the painting also trying to keep my brushwork quite loose really I want to get that natural feel so I'm just holding the brush pretty lightly like that in two fingers and then just letting it kind of glide across the canvas. I just love that effect you get with alizarin crimson when you put it into a mix that you get that really nice transparent purpley reddy colour. It seems to give a lot of depth to the shadows. Just trying to keep these darks quite minimal actually because there's when I'm looking there's not actually that many. I actually just made a mix up here for the greens in this tree over here. I'm just gonna try and I'm just gonna try it out really. And I've gone for some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for the darkest parts and then mixed in some yellow ochre to get the lighter mid-tones. All right, I feel like I'm getting a little bit bogged down in details here. I'm actually gonna start looking for some tones around the waterfall now, using a bit of that mix that I had before and bringing in some Naples yellow.
I'm just trying to get it in as quickly as I can without thinking too much. Maybe just a touch of yellow ochre might help out there a bit. Just also looking for the lighter parts as well. Just to try and get some form in there to help me out and see see where I am with this at this stage. I'm actually just trying to be a bit bolder with my colour choices because I find sometimes when I take them home they, they just look a little bit dark and now the <laughs> and now the sun has come out so it's changed completely that side of the tree but I'm just going to go with that quite like that light pattern on there so I'm not completely on my own today I've obviously got my lumberjack friends and a guy that's fishing over there oh and an F-16 fighter jet there we are Not exactly what you expect when you're out painting one of the most beautiful spots on the island. And yeah, now the sun's come round and it's directly onto the painting now. So it's actually a real challenge to see, see the differences in tone. It's almost having to guess really what it looked like before. Bringing in some yellow ochre and just making a general mix really with what I had before and just experimenting a bit and seeing which colours work best. So I really want to capture that bluey purpley look but not go too far so I'm going to bring I'm bringing in some yellow ochre just to tone it down a bit. It really seems to be about just getting a balance between the two. I'm just working on this area up here now up in the top of the cliffs there and the sun is coming through this way now so it's actually highlighting those cliffs up there which is actually quite nice so I'm, I'm just trying to work on that a little bit here I'm not sure I've got the tone right yet actually but I'm just experimenting a bit with some colours just to see what fits leaving room for some sky up here as well as you can see the sun has come round all the way this way now so that it's right direct on the panel just mixing into a little bit of yellow ochre alizarin crimson and a little bit of naples yellow there to try and match those rocks at the top So I've brought in some of this foreground down here and I'm just looking at these brambles and trying to make some gestures really that will indicate that there are some brambles there and maybe bring in some highlights a bit later on. I just don't want it to distract from the main feature of the waterfall, which I'm going to put in now actually. So in order to do that I'm going to take some titanium white and mix it up with a little bit of that bluey greeny mix over there. It's actually quite surprising how dark you need to go with the blue in order to represent the water falling down. There's also this area here where the water divides slightly. I'm just really trying to keep that feeling of motion in there as well. So now I've got the water in, I can now start looking at the sky and just get that blocked in. Just using a mix of titanium white, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson.
that's how far I've got I've put the sky in so the sun's come around so much that I can't really see so much anymore as an underpainting I think it's going pretty well and I think it's a good start there's plenty I need to work on once I get back to the studio but it seems to be going okay as you can see the sun's come all the way around now and it's actually really difficult for me to show you anything on the painting anymore because the sun's shining on the surface so I'm going to leave it there for today thanks for watching and goodbye from the urinal